Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Richard Van Inc from Bronson Healthcare. I'm the Director of Infection Prevention and Epidemiology. And I have with me today two experts in the area of vaccines, Dr. Carla Schwamm and Dr. Megan Sikama. So I wonder if um, you folks could perhaps introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about why um, the topic of COVID-19 vaccine is important in your practice. Dr. Schwalm? Hi, I'm Dr. Carla Schwalm. I'm the medical director for pediatric hematology and oncology here at Bronson Children's Hospital. I actually started a COVID-19 pediatric oncology registry with a few other people across the country and we've registered over 1200 patients. And we recently started a vaccine registry as well to see if there are effects happening with pediatric oncology patients to try to make sure that we're capturing those. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Sigma. I'm Megan Sigma. I'm a pediatrician at Bronson Children's Hospital. So I work in the outpatient world at Rambling Road Pediatrics, as well as um, inpatient pediatric unit. Um, vaccines have always been a passion of mine as a pediatrician. We talk about vaccines, we give a lot of vaccines, um, and especially with, with seeing some of the damage that COVID-19 can do to our, our kids in many different ways. I'm very passionate about making sure that families are, are comfortable and considering all their options when it comes to the vaccination. Great, great. Well, we thank you for, uh, for making yourselves available to, to help with this, with this project and to be on this video. Let's talk a little bit about what the topic is for today. Most Americans are advised to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And most adults, at least, don't get very many vaccines. It's kind of an unfamiliar thing for adults. You know, we get our tetanus shots, maybe our flu shots, but most adults don't get a lot of vaccines. So that's kind of a new thing uh, to us. A lot of people are concerned about whether the vaccine will harm them. And that's a very important concern. It's very common. Um, some people are very concerned about it. And so we would like to talk today about vaccines and what they do, how they work, whether they can cause harm to people, and, and how we would know uh, that information. So that's basically uh, the topic of the day is, uh, is, is, is the COVID-19 vaccines. So um, the first question that we have is kind of a, a basic question. What is a vaccine? What, what do vaccines do for us? Uh, Megan, would you like to do that since you probably have given more vaccines than almost anyone else <laughs> so uh, tell us, tell us about that. Yeah, so vaccines, um, essentially, I like to think of them as just giving our bodies an instruction manual. So it gives, it gives our bodies a head start and, and all of the data they need to create antibodies, which are our main protection against viruses and bacteria that we come into contact with. So while there's lots of different ways of making vaccines, essentially the underlying theme is, is just to prime our bodies to be ready to, to fight off anything that comes to us. Yeah, yeah. So, so Carla, how long after you take a vaccine, does that vaccine stay in your body? And what changes happen in your body after you've taken the vaccine? Specifically with the mRNA vaccines, the mRNA gets into your cells. It does not get into the nucleus of your cell, so it doesn't get into your DNA, but it gets into the cells and a protein coding piece of your cell starts making the spike protein, which then gets onto the white blood cells and your body recognizes that as foreign and starts making antibodies to the spike protein. Both the spike protein and the mRNA are out of your body fairly quickly after your body recognizes that it's there. All right, so it really stays in your body after you've had the COVID vaccine for more than um, a day or two. Uh, all right, so is the COVID vaccine different than other vaccine in significant ways? And Megan, do you think that the COVID-19 vaccines are as safe or safer or, or less safe than all the other vaccines that we normally give to people? 
Yeah, so the COVID vaccine is different, but in a very positive way. So it's it's using the mRNA technology, as Dr. Schwalm talked about, um, which is uh, newer, but it's actually been around for a while and been studied for a while. This is just the first vaccine that we've been able to give to um, humans that have used this technology. And all of our data so far shows that it's actually one of the, the safest um, ways to make a vaccine, and, and the side effect profile is significantly less than many of the vaccines that we give. Um, so likely we'll be seeing this technology in the future for, for many of our vaccines. Yeah. When you take a vaccine, sometimes you can feel it working. That is uh, the, the evening, in my case, the evening after I take a vaccine, I know that I've taken the vaccine because I have certain feelings in my body. So, so, so Carla, what does it feel like when you take a vaccine and what's happening to your body to make you have those feelings? Yeah, so the shot itself feels like just any other vaccine, which my kids will tell you is the worst ever, but I will tell you it's not that bad. The symptoms with the COVID-19 vaccine have been a little bit different than regular vaccines. Uh, sometimes regular vaccines, you can have fevers or just kind of achiness with the COVID-19 vaccine about 12 to 18 hours after some people are experiencing um, achiness, fevers, just more significant feeling not well, um, not so much cough and that sort of thing, but just really achy and just not feeling like you can get out of bed. That lasted for me about 12 hours. And then progressively after that, I got just a lot better. Definitely taking Motrin and Tylenol during that time helps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dr. Sikkim, any, any other things that you've noticed um, your patients tell you after they've had the, the COVID vaccine? It's been a really wide range. I will say my own experience, I, I was up doing everything normally. I, I wouldn't have even known I, I got the shot except for a little bit of a sore arm with the first one. Um, and when I ask my my patients or um, families of my patients, it's it's been anything from what Dr. Schwalm described to um, to really not even realizing that they had a shot. So um, I, I like to describe it as it's just your immune system working and firing up and, and getting ready to to confront front the virus if that happens. So all all positive things, even though it feels it can feel a little bit miserable for a few hours. Yeah, and those those feelings that you have after you take the vaccine are normal. And they mean that your body is responding the way it should to that vaccine. So that's not, not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually sort of a good thing. Now, sometimes we hear from people um, that they've heard from people that the vaccine has caused harm to someone. Do we know anything about that, um, Dr. Sikama, in terms of um, whether this vaccine uh, commonly causes harm to people? Is that something that we should be concerned about? So in, in general, with the original studies and then the, the millions of people that have received the vaccine since those initial studies, there's really no, no evidence that there's significant harm caused by the vaccine. There is um, the, the VAERS data, the vaccine adverse event reporting system data that sometimes we'll hear about. And that's really that anyone um, can submit anything that happened around the time of, of receiving the vaccine. Um, so there's a lot that's there, um, but there's constantly uh, watching that to see if there's anything of any significance. And thus far, there, there really hasn't been anything of, of concern um, in terms of uh, negative effects. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Schwam, uh, Dr. Zikama just mentioned this system um, called the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. Before COVID, hardly anyone knew about this system, and now it seems like a lot of people are talking about it and uh, searching it on the internet. So can you tell us a little bit about this system and what it tells us and perhaps what it doesn't tell us about um, any harm that we're, that we're uh, uh, hearing about for, from, from vaccines? Yeah, so like Dr. Sigma touched on, um, anybody can enter into the VAERS system. It can be the pharmacist at the hospital, it can be your physician or even general people 
can go in and enter anything into the VAERS system. So the FDA and the CDC are monitoring very closely what goes into the VAERS system. And if there's any concerning trends or even they will vet each kind of um, incident that gets inputted into the VAERS system to see if it really is causative, meaning did the COVID-19 vaccine cause whatever incident people are putting into the system or is it coincidental that those happened kind of at the same time? And you may have seen some Facebook entries going around about uh, that thousands of people died and that's in the VAR system. Um, if that were true, the CDC and the FDA would definitely have taken some action and protect the public and make sure that this is a safe vaccine. So it's being monitored very closely and you can feel confident that, that the data that's in the system is being monitored. Yeah, so yeah. the system um, doesn't really determine whether the vaccine caused anything. It, yeah. only it, it only says that you got the vaccine and this something happened to you um, and it got reported but the cause and effect relationship is not yet established when it's in the VAR system. That data goes to scientists and, and, and people that look at that and say, okay, now is there a relationship between them or is it just two things that, that happened um, uh, in close proximity? Yeah. The VAR system even has a disclaimer when you log into it that says, this data may or may not be true. It may or may not have been entered by reliable sources. Yeah. So Dr. Sikama, when, when, we, when we have vaccines and we give vaccines to people, to our patients, um, how do we know if that vaccine is causing harm to people? Um, how, how long do we look for that? What, what, is it, what does it mean when, when, we, when we say that a vaccine could, could cause harm to a patient? What's the timeline in terms of um, uh, when we would expect something to happen to someone as a result of the vaccine, particularly what's the end point or what's the long-term uh, horizon for a vaccine than any sort of a, of, a, of a safety issue? So typically we look for, you know, we, we monitor a very long time, um, really forever when, when a vaccine comes out, we're always reevaluating the safety. But in terms of, of really noticing any significant effects, it's usually within the first eight weeks and, and often sooner than that. But our, our data um, for the original vaccine when it came out was about two months. In the history of all vaccines, there's really not any vaccine out there or that was ever out there that showed any effects past the, the first month or so um, of, of monitoring. So we have, we have much longer than that now. And again, um, we continue to monitor it and still see no significant long-term effects. Yeah, yeah. So the FDA considers long-term for a vaccine to be about six months. And anything beyond that would be very unlikely to be caused by the vaccine. And it would be almost impossible to say if it was caused by the vaccine. So long-term for a vaccine is generally around that, that six month period. There's something that people are talking a lot about and that is this issue that um, people say that the COVID vaccine is damaging people's hearts. It's causing this, this condition that's called myocarditis or pericarditis. Um, can, 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 can you, Dr. Sikama or or, or Dr. Schwamm talk about that a little bit. What is that? And is that something that we should be concerned with? Yeah, I can, I can start us off. So myocarditis is an inflammation of the heart muscle. Pericarditis would be an inflammation around that heart muscle. There's varying degrees. Some are very mild where there may be a little bit of chest pain or just a fast heart rate. And then some can make kids very sick and end up in the hospital. 
The association that we've seen with the COVID vaccine to start off is still very, very rare. It's a small number of cases, but there is some concern that it could be related to the vaccine in some people. Um, but the ones that we have identified are very mild, typically not ending up in the hospital and just require some closer outpatient monitoring while the heart muscle recovers. Um, so, so while it's it's a possibility. It's certainly not something that would um, that I would deter anyone from getting the vaccine for, just because it's it's really not not um, causing any significant effects for these patients. Right, right, right. Dr. Schwam, let's let's um, let's let's put try to put things in perspective. People are concerned about harm caused by the vaccine, but. There's another harm out there, right? Isn't there, there the, the harm of the COVID virus? So can you perhaps uh, help us understand the risk of the vaccine compared to the risk of having COVID? Yeah, so the risk of having COVID itself, patients can get the myocarditis or pericarditis from COVID. And there have been reports of severe pericarditis and myocarditis with COVID, even so far as to be requiring heart transplants, where with the vaccine, we haven't seen that significant of uh, illness with just the vaccine. With COVID, there are all sorts of long-term complications with the lungs. We've had seen no complications at all with the lungs of patients who've received COVID vaccines. So just a lot of complications that you can prevent by getting the COVID vaccine I definitely am much more scared for my own children to get COVID-19 infection than for them to get the vaccine. And I felt the same way for myself, which is why we were all vaccinated pretty early. Yeah. So if, if we have concerns about the COVID vaccine, what should we do? Who should we talk to? Or how do we get more information about that so that we can make a, a good decision about that? So I think there's a lot of places on the internet that you can get information. Though the question is, where can you get good information? Um, I was looking this morning actually to see where I could find some good information. Most state websites have some pretty good information. There's a lot of information on each hospital website. So specifically Branson's hospital website, there's an entire COVID section. So you can read about statistics, you can read a, what, a lot about the safety of the COVID vaccine, just kind of all the information that you would want to get. The CDC also has a lot of really good websites along with the FDA. I would stay away from getting your information from uh, shares from Facebook, um, shares from social media. You really got to go to the, the heart of the matter and get onto a hospital website, the state website, or the CDC. All right, Dr. Right. Sidney, do you have any advice on, uh, on, on where to go for information about COVID vaccines? Yeah, I think the internet, as Dr. Schwal mentioned, is great, but I would also just advise talking to a trusted healthcare professional. Um, if you have a great re relationship with your um, physician or your child's physician, we're all ready and excited to talk about this and, and answer your questions. There's there's no silly questions, um, and so just, just trust that that person to, to lead you in the right direction. I think you trust them for um, probably most of your other medical care and, and this is really no different from that. So engage in those conversations with your trusted healthcare professionals and, um, and we can go from there. Well, great, this has been so helpful and I wanna thank both of you for um, giving us your time and your expertise to address this issue. Um, thank you to all the people who um, um, will be listening to this. And, and I hope this has been helpful to you and that you've learned something and, um, and that you're, you're better able to make a good decision. So thank you very much. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you.